Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be doing another edition of Animals Through Myths and Lore. I think this is the third one I've made like this and I really, really enjoy making it. So today I'm going to be doing what snakes represented throughout history and cultures. As always, I'm really sorry for any mispronunciation. I try my best to look up how to pronounce them. I'm not an expert on the topic. I'm not expect an expert in history or cultures. This is just something that I like to do in my free time and have made into videos. Also disclaimer, keep in mind if I say serpent in this video, I do mean snake. A lot of cultures and a lot of lore calls them serpents, but they are snakes. So let's start with the Aztecs and Mayans. In the Mesoamerican Aztec and Mayan cultures, snakes were both feared and awed. They represented divinity, rebirth, and spiritual power. Some of their deities are associated with snakes and are even depicted with serpent heads. Number two, indigenous Australians. So I do wanna say right now, there is a separate name. I will put it on the screen. I could not figure out how to pronounce it. I can't get my mouth to do it. So I'm just going to be calling them indigenous um, Australians for the sake of simplicity. And so I don't say the incorrect word. I would, I would just feel really bad, so yeah. <laughs> so to the indigenous Australians, snakes were very powerful creatures. They even have a specific creation story involving the rainbow snake. So from my understanding, the story starts in the beginning that the ground was very dry, very barren. So the rainbow snake went to seek out water. Doing so, the snake made a trail in the ground. So these trails became rivers. When it would rain, they would hold the water in, thus making life more possible on this island. Number three, Japan. So much like the indigenous Australians, Japanese cultures associated snakes with waterways and rivers. Because snakes shed their skin, they also associated them with eternal youth. The Japanese also saw them as protectors and associated them with wealth and dragons. Number four, China. In Chinese culture, the snake was a creator deity. The goddess Nuwa, sorry if I mispronounced that, was, a, was the creator goddess that made the first humans out of clay. Much like in Japan, they are also associated with dragons and good fortune and wealth. For number five, we're gonna go over to India. In India, snakes are highly regarded and sometimes even worshiped as deities. And the cobra is often depicted wrapped around the necks of the gods Shiva and Vishnu. They symbolize the awakening of divine energy, death and rebirth, and fertility. Number six on this list is ancient Egypt. Ancient Egyptians were beard snakes, especially the cobra. They also believed that a coiled serpent protected the sun god and creator Ra. In ancient Egypt, they often represented eternal life. Number seven, Africa. So ancient cultures throughout Africa often believed that snakes were reincarnations of their loved ones that have passed away, thus making it extremely taboo in those cultures to kill or harm a snake. They mostly just represented that rebirth and recycle like other cultures, but I thought it was so interesting that they actually, that they actually represented people that they loved and that they were reincarnations themselves. Number eight, ancient Greece. So in Greek culture, if you're like me and you're a big Greek nerd, you might know this one. So Ophion was one of the original titans that ruled the earth before he was eventually struck. Hey guys, editing Ollie here. I just wanted to say, I don't know why I forgot to clarify this, um, but the Greek Titan Ophion, um, he was a, a serpent, he was a snake. So that's how he ties in with the snake lore. He was literally a snake. So I'm sorry that I didn't make that clear. I just forgot to mention it, I guess. <laughs> anyway, back to the video, sorry about that. <laughs> He was believed to have incubated an egg in which all creation was born. They represented healing, and often gods such as Hermes would carry a rod with a snake coiled around it. On the flip side, in some Greek mythology and some Greek stories, snakes were more feared, such as the Medusa legend. Number nine, Celtic lore. For ancient Celts, snakes were seen as positively as every other wild creature in Celtic mythology. They were often symbols of healing, rebirth, and ancient wisdom. Celts believed that snakes originated from under the earth and thus knew all the world's secrets and knowledge. Number 10, we're gonna finish this list off with the Native American tribe, Cherokee. So in the Native American Cherokee tribe, snakes were often revered and respected, as well as feared. 
they were seen as having great power and it was very important that you give the snake respect. It was very important to give the snake respect and space in their culture. For them, the rattlesnake was the chief or leader of all snakes. And the rattle is considered to be an ornament of the thunder god. So it was always so it was always a rule to not take the snake's rattle. So one Cherokee legend talks about a horned serpent. Now horned serpents in Native American cultures are usually evil creatures. So here's a story about the first one in Cherokee legend. I also think the proper name is like Ukina. I, I will put it on the screen because again, I am so bad at pronouncing things, but the horned serpent was made long ago. So the legend of the Uktena is a Cherokee legend. Um, essentially, it is a horned serpent with wings. I'm just gonna read this quote from a 1992 book called History's Myth and Sacred Formula of the Cherokees. Those who know say that the Ukena is a great snake, as large around as a tree trunk, with horns on its head and a bright blazing crest like diamond upon its forehead, and scales glittering like the sparks of fire. The blazing diamond is called Un Suti, or transparent, and he who can win may become the greatest wonder worker of the tribe. Still, it is worth a man's life to attempt it, for whoever is seen by the Ukena, for whoever is seen by the Ukena is so dazed by the bright light that he runs towards a snake instead of trying to escape it. So the lore says that the sun sent a sickness down to kill people, and a man turned into the horned serpent to try to defeat the sun and save everybody. However, he failed. However, the rattlesnake was next. A man turned into a rattlesnake and he saved the people from the sun. The three-horned serpent was so angry and so embarrassed by his failure that he started to kind of scare people in his tribe. So the tribe's people took him far away from them and hid him away. In other tales, the three-horned serpent is born out of envy and anger and often represent the darkness of the underworld. So in a lot of Cherokee lore, it's kind of similar. It seems that they are either a beast, a scary creature, or they are well-respected like the rattlesnake. Just kind of depends on which story. All right, well, that is all I have for you today. I really, really enjoy these stories and I just, I think they're so fun. Uh, it can be kind of hard to find them, which is why I use a general snake thing. But let me know in the comments down below if you want a specific animal for me to do these lures with. And do it, make sure to check out my other ones if you're into it. I really, really like doing these. So I hope that I can continue. But yeah, that's all I had today. I went ahead and did 10 because there were so many. Um, I hope it wasn't too long. And I hope that if it was, you at least liked that it was long, maybe. Well, if you made it this far, regardless, don't forget to give this video a like for the algorithm. Comment down below if you have any recommendations for another animal for me to do this in the future with. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, link is down in the description below. I also have an art account, link is in the description below as well, where I do digital custom pet pictures. I also do have a Facebook group if you want to join it. It's just a place where we can share tips, get advice, share pictures of our pets, gush over our favorites, whatever. Um, it's mostly exotic based, but you can join if you don't have exotics or don't have pets at all. Links for that is in the description as well. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember all of that. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye!